Hey Facebook, it's Kara here with Kinsley's Creative Palette, and today we are painting the kite. Um, so if you've stuck with me the last few weeks, you learned to use the template, um, the printable template. Um, we learned how to put that together. We um, learned what kind of tools that we needed, uh, and then we learned how to cut with a jigsaw. So if you joined me last week, you learned how to cut this out um, with the jigsaw. So let me get my paint together and we will get started. Sorry friends, I'm trying to um, get it so y'all can see my, my board best. Just a second to adjust. see what all colors we're gonna pick we are gonna do an ombre not ombre sorry a tone on tone um, com color combination with this and we're gonna start at the top so I'm gonna move my board closer but we're gonna do blue and what other color? And when I say blue I'm going for turquoise and then let me see I think we're gonna do Lime green, ooh, purple would be pretty. No, let's do lime green. Let's do lime green and blue for the top. I'm gonna grab a plate. This is what I'm gonna use to put my paint on. I've got my microfiber towel to dry my brushes. And I think we're ready to get started. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm going to grab a colored pencil find everything else except the colored pencil. Here we go. Okay, I'm gonna get a colored pencil and a ruler or a straight edge of some sort. Now I'm gonna draw in a lighter color than normal so that it's easy to cover up. So I'm gonna move that plate to the side for a minute and move my paint to the side for a minute. <laughs> Hey ladies, yes, I'm so sorry. Um, yesterday just got away from me. I had lots of other stuff going on and I just did not get to do live. Happy Mother's Day, Christy. Thank y'all for bearing with me. Um, I have never done this. I've never gone live on a Saturday, I don't think. Um, so this will be a first. Okay, so I'm drawing a line straight across. Which, this is too light. I have to move to something darker. Let's try purple. Oh, that's black. That's not what I want. Um, green, maybe? Okay, so let's try that again. We're going to go from one side to the other, which would be easier if I had a yardstick, but I don't. So I'm just going to make do with my watermelon cutout right here that my sweet daughter painted. And then we're going to go down the... Um, other way. I'm just going to go, I'm going to do my center as best I can. I'm kind of lining it up with my flowers down here, but I'm just going to, I'm not going to go all the way down with um, that line. Thank you for understanding. <laughs> Christy, you're so sweet. Ah. Okay, so you can see my lines. I have divided my kite into four quadrants. Is that what we'd say? quadrants. Uh -oh, my math's not the best. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to start with, do we want to do the lighter color first or the darker? I want to do the darker color first. So we're going to do straight turquoise and straight lime. And I say straight turquoise and straight lime because we will be mixing here in a few minutes. So let me get my paintbrush out. Which one do I want to use today? Mini, mini, mani, mo. Catch a tiger by his hoe. Um, are y'all ready for Mother's Day tomorrow? 
my daughter surprised me today and she um, made me some Mother's Day stuff and she brought it to me because she said it's not a surprise if you do it on Mother's Day. So I got Sane Tune everything. It was super sweet. Okay, so I'm going to dip into the blue first and I'm going to paint this bottom quarter blue. Now to get your good crisp lines, you want to load one side of your brush and when I say load it, you put quite a bit of paint on there and then look. There's hardly anything on the other side. So we load it and go slow and we're just using that one side to get our, to get our crisp line. That might be better if I, yeah, there we go. Let me do that. Now this wood's gonna soak up this first coat of paint pretty quickly. And it should not, as long as you do thin coats of paint, which you always should, um, it shouldn't take very long to dry. I would say by the time that we are done with um, the other quadrants, we will be ready to come back and paint this. Okay. I'm gonna smooth that out. I've got a little bit too much paint on this line, so I'm gonna Go across it again. There we go. Okay, now I'm gonna move up here. And we're gonna paint this top part while I still have blue in my brush. So what are y'all doing on this Saturday? We've had a pretty lazy Saturday today. Our um, air conditioner is out in our master, well, the whole upstairs. And last night it was finally gonna get cooler outside at night, so I opened the windows and I think it's the first time that it hasn't been like sweaty hot up there in um, a week or so. And when I called the AC people, they told me that they can't fix it right now because the temperatures are still dropping and they can't properly diagnose the problem. So, all right, I'm just gonna set this brush to the side for a second and I'm gonna get another brush and I'm gonna do the green. I need new water. I think I could talk one of my kids into getting me some since they're home. Okay, so I'm gonna do the green and same way. I'm just gonna go right up to my blue. I'm giving these this edge just a little bit of a chance to dry, so I'm gonna paint the middles first because if I mix wet paint, if I put wet paint with wet paint, it just mixes. And so I'll have something um, not blue or green. So I'm gonna do these middles first and then I'll do that edge. Now, you see how I'm not like being real specific down here? Let me show you why. Because you see how our flowers are gonna kind of overlap up there? So I'm not really worried about um, where that ends and where the other stuff starts. I need some more green paint. My blue is almost dry. All right, so I'm gonna go slow to get my crisp line. Hey Jennifer, how are you today? Happy early Mother's Day. Let me show y'all that line up close. You see what I mean by your crisp line? Just where those two lines meet. Hey, Tisha. I'm gonna come down this way now. And if I have too much paint on my brush, I kind of brush it away. And then 
and start again. So my kids are dying. Oh, um, Julie, yes, I did. I did make my cup cozy. Isn't that so cute? I have a couple others that I put around my coffee cups. Um, so my kids are dying to go to uh, Golden Corral. Does anybody else not like Golden Corral? I mean, it's not bad. Don't get me wrong. The food's not bad. But it's just probably my least favorite place to take them and... They just have been begging me all day. Thank you. I'm glad you like the blue and green. I was trying um, to figure out what colors I would not be using in the flowers and do that up here, which obviously I'll use some green with the leaves, but I won't be using the blue. And we're going to end up putting polka dots on it in a lighter green and a lighter blue. So it'll give it some more character. And then if you join me next week, we will put the finishing touches on it, which will be ribbon and lettering. Buffets bother me. Yeah, my husband won't go. That's why the kids are like, won't, won't you just take us? And I'm like, well, I don't want to go without your dad. And he's like, I don't do buffets. Okay, so I am going to put my brushes down for a minute and I'm going to do a little bit of drawing and I'm going to hand draw this but if you use the template this is when you would use your carbon paper this is when you would put your carbon paper down on your board and you would set your flower and um, you would set your flowers or whatever on on here and trace. Hey sissy, I need to do a video on the cozy too. Um, well the cozy is done actually on the embroidery machine and so um, it's uh, an in, the, in the hoop project. I don't know if you know it's not a it's not really a t -t 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 sewing machine type project so if you don't have an embroidery machine it wouldn't do you very much good but if you have an embroidery machine send me a message and I will tell you where I got that file okay so I'm going to just kind of sketch out these leaves now yours is probably going to look better than mine because you're probably going to use the transfer paper and it'll actually look like the um, sample okay so that goes there I am going to use the, um, are y'all laughing at me because I'm winging it? I am going to use it for this flower right here. I just don't want to get it up here on my wet paint. So let me set this down and hold my breath. And maybe if I don't sneeze or something, it will um, not get on there. All right, so all I'm going to do all I'm going to do is I'm going to use my pencil and I'm going to go around the edges of this flower outline. Let's see, does that one overlap? Yep. <laughs> Julie, I am a true crafter of, of all things. <laughs> it's, um, it's kind of funny, but I tend to love that kind of stuff. Okay, so there's that one. And then I'll do this one. And then there. That should pretty much match up. Let's see how bad I did. Oh, it's not too bad. Hey, friend. How are you today, Miss Christy? All right, guys, look at that. Look, look, look. How fun is that? Now, what do you see wrong with this picture? Anybody see anything wrong with this picture? Let me get some more blue and green. And I'm going to come bring this down some because I 
figured it was going to come down further than that. So I'll start with the green because I already have it on my brush. And while I'm doing um, this green, I'm going to go ahead and do the leaves real quick. Yes, Julie, I do sell my crafts to other people. I would be happy to make you one. Just shoot me a message. Okay, let's see. So I'm just going to go right up to where that flower is drawn. And I went over a little bit, but that's okay. We'll fix it. But I am getting the color on the leaves. Now, there's one thing you need to remember. If you cut with a jigsaw, you are going to have to paint the edges of your board. If you use a laser or you purchase blanks that are laser cut, you don't have to paint the edge of your board because they're sealed um, somewhat whenever they are um, burned. But you need to paint the edges if you're using a jigsaw. So if you teach paint parties to other people, you'll want them to paint their edges too. All right. Putting a second coat of green on here. Okay. And then I'm going to do some green. Let me move this up so y'all can see. Maybe. There. You can swipe comments away if they're getting in the way of the painting. So I'm painting these edges. And I'm going to paint this leaf right here. Turn it so you can see. Okay. So I got all those edges. Now let's go up here, get some more green paint. I grossly underestimated how much green I was going to need today. And let's put another coat on here. Did y'all have a good week this week? My week was crazy chaotic. We had um, staff appreciation at school and we had something planned for every day of the week, and the only day that I didn't have to go up there was Wednesday, which was so nice. I just had to go Wednesday evening to Sam's Club and buy breakfast for Thursday. But I did not hardly get to sit at my desk or paint or any work-related things all week. So I'm a little bit behind. Okay, so I'm gonna set this brush down I'm going to go back to my turquoise and let's see, y'all are seeing here. I'm going to put another coat on. And I'm getting this side. This is a big brush, so just be careful that you don't get into the other paint. And you remember, I didn't go down far enough, so I'm going to have to go down further with this coat. switch to a smaller brush for just a second while I go into this area down here. So when you have more detailed, the more detailed your work, the smaller your brush. That makes sense. But I need to be able to get in a smaller place. So. Um, I thought about going live earlier today. It was like, I don't know, 10.30 or 11 o'clock this morning. And my trimmer got so bad. I 
was like, uh, yeah, I can't paint right now. Like, usually it's not so bad I can, I just have to say, no, I can't paint, but I couldn't paint. There was no, no way. No way. All right, so I'm gonna do this top part. Put another coat of blue on. I'm gonna switch back to my bigger brush though. It doesn't make sense to use this little bitty brush. I'm done with this green, I'm just gonna put it in the water. So when you're not using your brushes, for the most part, they need to be in the water so that you don't get a lot of dry paint and then you have to work really hard to clean them because as long as they go straight into the water, they're not hard at all to clean. Okay, blue. Now since I got those edges um, good and crisp with my first coat, I'm not going right up to those edges this time. I'm gonna go right along the side. If I get um, a big clump of paint or anything, I just smooth it out like this. Just bring it, bring it out. Now I need to double check and make sure I got all my sides because I'm feeling like I might have missed one. Yep, I did. So let me get some more turquoise. So I'm ready to put my first coat of paint on all of my flowers, so I need to figure out what colors I want them to be. And let's see. I know I want this big one to be pink because pink is my color. So let's go ahead and start with that and then I will figure out the others. I think we're going to do yellow and orange. So I'm loading my brush, let's see if I can lift this up and show you. I'm loading my brush and I'm going to go slow around these edges. You see that? I'm just going right up to that line. Okay, so that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to do the outline first. Now when I say I load my brush, I only load it on one side. Only load it on one side. Now I'm going to get this side while I'm down here, this edge. other two and because um, these are either going to be yellow or orange I need to make sure that I cover as much of that line that I drew as possible with the pink because the yellow and the orange are both very transparent colors so they're not going to cover really well okay there's my pink now let's see I think I want to do yellow and orange. Question is, yeah, I want to do this yellow. Now, when you're doing yellow, knowing that it's a transparent color, you can add white 
then that will help some. You can add white to your yellow for the first coat, and then you can go over it with just yellow for the second coat. But I'm just gonna go straight yellow, because I'm stubborn. And I like to paint 12 coats of paint on my sign. Okay, remember what I said about going um, right against what you just painted? You wanna stay away from it for a second and let it dry. Well, hello from Massachusetts. All right, so there's my yellow. I'm not gonna wash that brush yet. Um, I'm gonna get some orange. It's just a bright orange. And I'm gonna go ahead and put a coat on this other flower. I wish y'all could see how transparent this is. You can just see the board right through it. Okay, I'm going slow right around those edges. Well, hello from Michigan. Wanda's joining us. like my husband's watching a superhero movie in there. All right, I'm gonna get these edges just like the others. Okay, now I need to do another coat of paint on all of it. So what are we gonna talk about while we do another coat of paint on all of it? Y'all tell me what we're gonna talk about. Give me some ideas. What do y'all wanna know? Anything you want to know? Hello, Alicia. Alicia's driving back to me. She's been gone for a week now. Have you been gone longer than a week? It feels like longer. We usually get to see each other and have lunch at least one day a week, but not this week. She was having lunch with her family and having a good time at the pool. Where else did they go? They went to um, the Arch in St. Louis. They had a grand old time. I swear she finds the best vacation spots. Like she finds all these really cool places. I need her to plan my next vacation. Okay, that's gonna be enough pink. So I'm gonna put my brush in the water. I'm gonna grab my yellow, get some more. Put another coat of yellow. This yellow is actually covering a whole lot better than I expected it to. So much so that I want to see what kind it is. It's the Deco Art Americana and it's cadmium yellow. So it's doing a pretty good job.
any of you moms or grandmothers have experience with swim team? Because my daughter wants to do swim team this summer. I'm bracing myself. Is it very competitive? I'm hoping not. I am going to touch up this green and this blue before I move on to my orange because I'm going to give it another couple seconds to dry. So I'm just going to touch this up where I didn't go down far enough the first time. touch up the green. Did y'all see what we're painting next month for the virtual paint party? We're painting the sunflower and I painted it another way. It's kind of a mix between the whimsical and the more realistic. It turned out super cute. Um, I just got asked by Julie, what do you have a favorite brand of paint? Um, well, I will tell you that I, I feel like some colors are better in some lines than others. Um, and there's certain times, and I'm, I have them written down, I can't remember off the top of my head, but there are certain times that if you'll buy a satin instead of a uh, matte, then the, it'll actually cover better, especially with red. But um, I don't have that list with me. But right now I'm just using whatever I have because I have a drawer full of paint over here. I like this color combination. So fun. Okay. I think I've got two coats on all of that. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to work on my polka dots. And in order to do that, I'm going to turn my board like this, like this. And the first thing that I need to do is I need to mix some white with my turquoise and my green. So I don't want to set my plate. I want you to be able to see. There we go. All right. So put a big glob of turquoise and a big glob of white. I did about half and half. And then for my green, I'm gonna do a big glob of green and a big glob of white. Then I'm gonna take, this is very important, I'm gonna use the back of the paintbrush. Don't use this part, just don't do it. Just don't use that part. Because you know what happens, you waste a lot of paint and then you have to wash the brush. So, I'm going to mix with the back of my paintbrush. And now I have a super light green. Hello, Barbara from Memphis, Tennessee. Okay, so now I have a super light green. This is almost like a celery color. And this is a great way to only paint with a few colors, but to get a lot of, um, oh, I don't know, dimension, I guess, out of your, out of just a few colors, is to do tonal paintings, where you do um, two different tones of the same color. Okay, so there's my blue. And this is kind of like a robin's egg. 
color. And then, see, now we have a clean paintbrush. That's it. So much better. Okay. Now, I do have favorite brushes to do polka dots with. And let me show you. So, if you want a medium sized polka dot, which is usually, thank you, Kim, which is usually about the size of one of these small paint bottles, you would use a brush about this big. Let me show you that in comparison to that polka dot size. Um, I don't have one of the big bottles over here, but I like the bigger polka dots, and so I use a bigger brush. And this brush is about twice that size, and it makes a polka dot about twice that size. Okay, so we are going to do green on green and blue on blue. So I'm gonna load one side of my brush. I'm gonna set it on my board. I'm gonna start this polka dot right at that line, and then we're just gonna spin. And I'm only doing a half spin because I only want a half a polka dot on this one. Okay, so there's my half polka dot. Now I'm gonna load one side of my brush again. And I'm gonna set it down and I'm gonna do a whole polka dot this time. Look how pretty that is. Okay, now when I do polka dots, I like to make a triangle pattern. So these two and one right here, if you drew a line with your pencil, they would make a triangle. So that's what I wanna do. I wanna come up here and I want to make one up here. Now by using the triangle pattern to make your polka dots, you won't ever have to wonder, ooh, should I put another one here? Should I put another one here? Uh, because your pattern will stay consistent. So I am gonna do a partial right here, just because that's a lot of dead space right there. Now I'm gonna flip my board and I'm gonna do polka dots on the other side with the green. Now there's a tendency when you're doing polka dots for it to get kind of thick. Um, if you're going to be doing hand lettering over the top of this, you're going to want to smooth that out some. Okay. All right, let me get this one. These half polka dots are my favorite. They're so fun to make. Okay. Now, let me show you this. So, you see how that one, I didn't go all the way over? It's because that leaf is going to be right there. So, that's how come I didn't go all the way over on that one. So, let's do one right here. And I'm going to do a small partial right here. Now I'm going to have to touch back up with that pink because I went over just a little bit. But I'm done with that brush and that color. I'm going to go ahead and touch that pink up real quick even though I know my paint's still wet. I'm going to do right along this edge. Let me wash this brush again, and we're going to do the polka dots on the blue. Same way. You can start wherever you want. Just remember to use the triangle pattern.
done with our polka dot. Okay, there we go. So polka dots are done. Oh, no, they're not. I forgot this whole piece up here. Were y'all gonna let me forget that? Or is somebody gonna tell me, woman, you're messing up. Let me add some up here. That's enough. All right, friends. So next we're gonna work on our flowers. I need to put my phone on silent in just a second because I forgot. Because I forgot. To make the most of my colors, I'm going to add some um, white to my pink. So I got my dark pink and I'm going to mix some white in there. May not mix it quite as light this time. Ooh, I got a big paint boogie. Let's see. sure it's light enough that I get that contrast though. Nope, I need to go lighter. That's better. Okay, so we're going to go around this pink flower with the um, lighter, the lighter pink. We're not going to go right up to the edge, but we're going to come pretty close. And this brush is wooden and I left it in the water and so all this stuff is flaking off. That is what not to do. What not to do. Okay, I want kind of a stiff brush. I'm going to go to this. Where did I put that one? Oh. I'm going to go back to this one. I'm going to load one side of my brush. And then I'm going to come right on the inside. And you don't have to be exact about this. I'm just gonna kind of um, make the flower shape. On the inside. So we're just putting a little bit around there. And it doesn't have to be perfect. And I'm going to do um, a middle in this light pink. Okay, now let's leave that for now. We're going to let that dry. A little bit more paint right there. And then we're going to come back and add some more that so that's not done um, let me <clears throat> get that brush in the water and then I think we're gonna do the yellow next Let's see. oh my yellow needs another coat my yellow did not cover so before we can add accents to the yellow let's add some more paint Now I think I'm gonna do something different with this yellow and this orange. I think that we will use yellow to accent the orange and orange to accent the yellow. What do y'all think? Does that sound good? Alright, 
I need another coat on my orange too. So I need to do a darker green with the leaves. So I'm gonna put some darker green on my plate. I'm gonna put some straight white on my plate. And then I'm gonna let that dry a little bit more. And we're gonna work with a smaller brush and work on the leaves. I'm just gonna bring, oh, my orange might be too small. No, it's still good. Okay. Mm, this one will work. Okay, so I'm gonna just dip in my green and I'm gonna go right on the outside of my leaves. I'm gonna do one line one right here. And then I'm gonna do a partial right there, right here, hmm, okay, so I did those three leaves. Now let's see if this is drying yet. Not quite dry yet. Okay, I'm gonna use the same little brush. We're gonna add some white accents to this pink while it's still a little bit damp. All right. If you over accent, which I don't like that one right there. If you over accent, all you have to do, this is the beauty of paint, is um, paint a little bit over the top of it. Let it dry and then paint over the top of it. Okay, so for my orange, we're going to accent with yellow. And these petals were kind of, um, they weren't real round at the top. I don't know how to describe them. I'll show you in a second. But I'm going to try to follow that when I outline this. I'm still going right on the inside, though. y'all see that how they're more I don't know, squared off alright and so I'm just gonna go on these edges kind of like I did the pink just right on the inside so that there's still a yellow around the outside
put orange in the middle of this one. And I'm going to go ahead and dip in the white and then put a little white in there. All right, so I did want to touch up this middle. I'm going to go, I think I'm going to take the white out of that part. I think I want to keep it um, all dark. Hello, April. So I'll probably need to go over that again, but for now, that's good. And I need to figure out what I want to do in the middle of this flower. I think I'm going to do a white middle. Let's see how this looks. Do a white middle. We'll have to go back over that not going to cover the first the first time. I think we're going to do a white middle with um, maybe yellow dots. I'm going to go back over my yellow again around these edges. And then this is, that was supposed to be orange. up a little bit more. And then we're going to do, let me get the yellow need that to dry a little bit more. I think we might do some black on here. We might put some black dots in the middle. Now, in order to do the small dots, what you're going to do, and I'm only going to do them on the middle flower first, you use the back of your paintbrush. Thank you, Mary. You can use the back of your paintbrush and you're just going to dot them on there like that. That way you don't have to try to use a small paintbrush and do the um, make these little bitty dots. some black dots on the inside of this one. Now I'm bringing this black in down here and we'll also bring it in when we do wording. 
so that will be next week. Let's see. Let me get some more um, white paint and start covering this up. <laughs> Mary, you crack me up. That's awesome. Are you going to get it? You may have should have told him like last week. <laughs> it might be too late today. Well, I guess if Home Depot's close, it's not too late. All right. friends whenever we do the um, lettering we may do some more accents on our on our kite but for now this is where we're gonna leave it how stinking cute is that how cute so thank you guys so thinking much for joining me on this beautiful Saturday and I hope that you'll all have a um, fabulous Mother's Day and I can't wait to see y'all back here next week. So we will learn how to easily letter next week and let me show you um, really quickly what I mean by that. So I just did the virtual paint party for May. Is it May? Yeah, for May. Um, and I did a couple different printables that they could use. Um, Mary, you crack me up. You're keeping hope alive. Honey, you do it. Keep hope alive. And if not, yes. I wish I was there. I'd go shopping with you. So I did a couple different printables. I did this one. I would show you the other one, but it looks... Oh, here's the other one. Thank you so much. Happy Mother's Day to you as well. Let's see. Gosh, I can't get my papers apart. All right. And I did this one. So... If you painted with me this month you got to pick like which lettering you wanted or you didn't have to do any or you could um, hand letter it yourself but what we did which I can't set it on here but we took our carbon paper and we put underneath one of these and we traced them on and then we went over it with my new favorite paint pen let me show it to you um, this is the white one yep this is the white one but um, these, I'm, ups, I'm upside down, are Uniposca pins, and they're in my Amazon affiliate store, and they are awesome. And let me tell you why. They're awesome because they you don't have to keep priming them. You know how a lot of times when you're writing with a paint pen, you have to keep stopping and priming it? You don't have to do that with these. These are fantastical. So, Uniposca, they're in my Amazon store. And thank y'all so much for joining me. I'll see y'all back here next week. Bye, guys.